so really there's nothing much to running the outlap except full throttling right by the wall, turning off the wall a little bit so that you don't get the wall arrow and straightening out your wheels as early as possible and then cutting down to the apron. I like cutting down to the apron right at the end of the Geico restart zone uh, because that gives you the straightest angle to keep all your momentum even if it is a little bit of a rough transition. Don't try, I think if you slam it all at once, you lose a little bit more speed than if you kind of do it a little more gradually. Um, that's just my theory though. I don't have any proof on that. Uh, I like staying on the apron a little bit longer than you might want to because I don't really need to get all the way out to the wall to get back into the corner. It's funny, I didn't get all the way to the bottom in this corner, but it carried more speed than every time I got all the way on the white line. So I'm almost thinking might be track temperature shenanigans in this testing session, but I'm almost thinking that keeping it like a quarter lane off the bottom might actually be faster. There might be a grip strip there or something. Hard to say for sure, but I did not beat this time in my other attempts uh, going, and that was all the way at the bottom there. So mess around with that, but yeah, I mean, there's not much to say. It's full throttle and it's very easy to control. Uh, three and four is a little bit harder to control, so we'll, we'll take a look at that more in depth here. So I like to shallow entry. If you get really uncomfortable with full throttling three and four, wider entries will help you be more stable, but just know that you are losing about half a 10th uh, off the entry there, just because of not shortcutting the track. Uh, you can see that we have a little bit of angle to make up because we are not quite turned enough for it to be super comfortable off the corner. So I actually exit the corner a little bit earlier, let the car slide up a little earlier and just try to keep the car off the wall. Uh, with that wider entry, I'm going to be more pointed this whole corner so that I don't have to slide up as early as I do right here. But the reason I'm sliding up early is because I'm at that wheel threshold to where if I turn the wheel anymore, I feel like I'm going to lose the right rear tire and start sliding it and sliding equals less speed. So that's kind of just my reason for it. I would rather have a less optimal line with full grip than a optimal line with a sliding tire. But again, full throttle. If you aren't able to make that work, widen out the entry, make it a little bit more of an apex, but it's a little bit faster to get to the bottom early and then let it slide up early. And then again, about the Geico restart zone is when I cut back down into the start finish line. I don't have too much insight for this because it's a full throttle lap, but I think long run will be more interesting. So let's take a look at that. All right, let's talk about long run. So this is going to be pretty much only, one of the only times that you actually want to tire save in the truck series on a mile and a half. Not actually, but like what you're doing at Chicago is a lot different than what you would do at like say Vegas or something like that. So at Chicago you can full throttle for a very long time, but I really do like just breathing out of the throttle on early run. You might give up a tenth per corner. As long as you're not losing track position doing this, I understand Pushing for the first like five laps or so, sometimes you just need to do it to keep track of position. But once you guys get into that uh, zone where you don't have too much pressure on you, you can save a lot of tire by just doing little things. So for instance, as I'm going in, instead of going full throttle, I'm just gonna breathe it out to about half until I get to the bottom. And then I just go straight back onto the throttle. It loses me a little bit of momentum, but I'm not, really pushing my tires at all. Same with three and four. Three and four, it's really easy to get too much slide on the right rear. You don't want that. You want to keep the car as neutrally balanced as possible through three and four, and then you don't want it to be too hard on the right front in one and two. So just taking care of those things, managing when you can, because especially with the draft and trucks, if you're behind somebody, there is no reason that you can't lift a little bit on entry and then just draft back up to them on the straightaway and just like stay like that for 10 15 laps and then suddenly as the tires wear off you're literally just better than everyone else and that's how people win these races when they go green like, do they always go green no but <coughs> excuse me it's always good to be prepared for winning towards the end of the run the top is going to start working some people do go right by the wall you can if you want to but you can see that it's really easy to run the top but the more that you wear the tires the more sketchy and slidey it's gonna be so it's like you only use the top to cash in the tires that you save when you think it's go time and that's kind of up to interpretation when go time is 
I like to go to the top probably 20 laps into a run, maybe 15 if other people are looking to pass me and doing it a little bit early. But I like going to the top either to gain a quick burst of track position on people who aren't expecting it after like lap 15, or as a defensive maneuver to keep people behind me uh, and have them wear their tires on lap 20. And then towards the end of the race, I think everyone's going to be at the top the longer the run goes. That's usually how it goes here. And then when you go back to the bottom, sometimes just rotating where you go helps the tires heat more evenly. So if you go up to the top sometimes, and if you go to the bottom sometimes, the heat will distribute more evenly than if you hit the same line every single time. And they're really not that hard. I'm just driving with, with this. It's like, I'm not even really thinking about wall ripping or the wall or anything like that. It seems like one and two is the better corner for uh, wall ripping. So maybe if I were to choose which corner goes where, I think I would do the top of one and two and the bottom of three and four. Which makes sense too, because three and four is just looser on the bottom. And when something's loose like that, it kind of tells you that that's where you want to be. Three and four, I, I really like on the bottom, to be honest with you. So that might be what I recommend. Okay, let's, let's go check the tires here. You can make middle work too, but it's kind of no man's land. Don't go there unless you're like forced to, like three wide middle or something. But just run the middle like you would run the bottom, except just with that seam being your bottom. Shouldn't be too much of a change. So we got 98, 97. So wearing the right rear is always a good sign at the beginning of the run, but you don't want to imbalance it too much. So just keep your right front cool, but not so much that your right rear becomes imbalanced and starts really giving you issues. All right. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day. Hope to see you all on the track.